the best Android smartphone that you're not buying. That's what I called the HTC 10 in one of my first reviews as Mr. Mobile, and a year after release, it's still the best all-around HTC phone you can get. But with a spring sequel and a superior Samsung on the horizon, does it still deserve your attention? I'm Michael Fisher, and this is the HTC 10 Review Redo. Physically, the HTC 10 has probably held up better than any smartphone from last year. My Galaxy S7, Moto Z Play, parts of the Pixel and Jet Black iPhone all suffer from the pits and scratches common to glossy phones. Now, my 10 has seen its share of tumbles too, as the third generation Gorilla Glass will attest. But the majority of the scrapes and scuffs on the backside are hidden by the aluminum's satin finish, which also does a nice job of masking nine months of collected fingerprints. After an endless parade of glossy ingots of delicate glass, the 10 is refreshingly sturdy, like a hunk of bar stock from a forge in 1950s Detroit. This extends even to the buttons, whose rough texture and addictive chunk bring the whole hand feel home. What else has held up? How about that front-facing camera, still one of the only optically stabilized selfie shooters in existence, and still pretty good in most lighting conditions? though it does tend toward over-softening, so you've got to be cool with dim photos coming out a little Vaseline-y. That's less noticeable in video mode, where that stabilization really shines. I'm sure I join a host of vloggers who hope HTC keeps this feature in the next phone. As for the primary camera, well, if you use out-of-box settings, you'll probably find the HDR mode a little aggressive, in that it sacrifices saturation for highlights and also shoots a little hot. This has long been a hallmark of HTC. But if you turn off HDR and fiddle with the exposure a little, there's definitely some magic to be squeezed out of this camera. Magic you can amplify with Zoe. Now, you might think Google Photos has eliminated the need for this kitschy little app, but you'd be wrong. Zoe has always been the best when you want a quick rundown of your day or your weekend away to share with your Facebook friends, and you don't want to spend an eternity building it. The camera also features a full range of manual controls in Pro Mode, and you can shoot in RAW, though you should invest in a micro SD card if you do. On the subject of fancy features, it's worth revisiting just how awesome HTC's high-res audio is. As long as you're willing to work with MKV files, the sound quality on video really is stunning. Sadly, that sound doesn't really survive my editing process, so don't judge it based on this video. But do take a second to take a look at the footage and draw your own conclusions. Sticking with audio for just a second, the presence of a headphone jack is nice, and the fact that it's backed up by a high-quality DAC and amplifier are good news for audiophiles. Now, as a fan of the older boom sound speakers on the One Series, I was disappointed by the decision to go with a bottom-firing woofer and an earpiece tweeter on the 10, because it's just not as good. Strategically, though, this turned out to be a good call. Front-firing speakers all but vanished in phones last year, and, well, very few people seem to have noticed. So, HTC's decision to sacrifice a speaker for a fingerprint scanner holds up, despite my sadness. Leading off the list of things that haven't held up, the lack of waterproofing. The HTC 10 has the same ingress protection rating as the Google Pixel, IP53. Essentially, that means it's dust and splash resistant, but only to a point. The newest phones from Apple, Samsung, and LG are IP67 or 68, much better suited to braving the hazards of the outside world. And speaking of outside, the 10's display is a bit too dim for the sunniest of summer days, and its horizontal polarization makes it very hard to see if you're wearing polarized sunglasses. Combine that with the biggish bezels, and it's tough to give this display high marks in 2017. Although if you're worried about the screen burn-in that sometimes plagues AMOLED panels, you can rest easy. This is an LCD, and I've seen no such problems. On battery, the 10 walks a pretty fine line. On one hand, the power pack is only average capacity, and it's never lived up to HTC's claim of two-day battery life. 
In fact, if you're a heavy user, you'll definitely be topping up well before dinner time. But when you do plug in, you're using Quick Charge 3.0 through a USB-C, both welcome bits of future proofing. Finally, let's talk software. I won't say that all of it hasn't held up, because there are legit bright points here. The 10 was among the first phones to get Android Nougat back in November, and my review device is also running the March security update. Kudos to HTC for keeping up. On the downside, Android 7.0 has brought stutters, stammers, heat ups, and other performance issues to most of the phones I've used it on, and the 10 is no exception. In particular, Google speech to text is often broken, and the camera viewfinder sometimes runs slowly as well. It's worth noting that I probably could have avoided these problems with a factory reset before updating to 7. Aesthetically, HTC Sense is relatively inoffensive. The once handsome design is starting to feel a bit stale to me, and when a torrent of irrelevant news alerts led me to turn off Blink Feed, I realized I didn't miss it at all. Google Now has really won the war if you want news and information at your thumb tip, and there's really no compelling reason left to run Sense, at least not one I can think of. If you disagree, cool, it's here if you want it. Deciding whether to buy the HTC 10 in 2017 depends mainly on how cheaply you can come by it. At press time, the price of an unlocked HTC 10 is a buck under $600. That's a damn steep price to pay when you consider that the OnePlus 3T brings a very similar experience for $160 less. If you're a connoisseur of industrial design or an audiophile with a need for a dope DAC, maybe the 10 still makes sense for you. Just do yourself a favor and find it for less on Amazon. Or wait for another price cut once the sequel launches, which should be soon. And hold out hope that the sequel builds on the very solid foundation the 10 laid down, rather than careening wildly into some mirror-plated warp zone. To brave that mirror universe, check out Mr. Mobile's U Ultra review on YouTube, and please subscribe while you're at it. Till next time, thanks for watching, and stay mobile, my friends.